again, just like you said, be natural when calling them and, and telling them, hey, we are just from the neighborhood trying to improve the health environment and improve the, your home seems like may need a little bit of work. How can we help you with that? And sometimes that's even better than saying, I want to buy your home. It's how can we help you get your home to the, in the shape that you like it to be? What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Creating Wealth Podcast, where I, Kyle, from Kyle Curtin Real Estate, interview local top dogs in the real estate investing, wealth building, and personal finance industries. Let's build together. What's up, guys? This week's guest on the show is incredibly inspiring. Heidi began her very amazing real estate journey in banking and eventually led to making quite the jump into the real estate space and eventually became the acquisitions manager for J&J Companies Incorporated. Today, we got to chat about so many aspects that you need to be successful in the real estate space, from having the willingness to succeed, the absolute need for self-awareness, surrounding yourself with the right people, being natural and genuinely want to help people, and so much more. There is so much to learn from this episode, and I hope you enjoy. Let's jump right into the episode. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 76 of the Creating Wealth podcast. Today, we get the great pleasure of chatting with Heidi Barrero, a phenomenal Boston-based investor with 84 units in the Mattapan and Roxbury markets, an agent and acquisitions manager of J&J Companies, What's going on, Heidi? How's everything going? What's new? Hi, Kyle. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, I'm doing great. Honestly, happy to be here. Super excited to um, share this platform with you and, and um, talk about how we can help that community and inspire other people to be in the same table we're in right now. Awesome. I'm so excited to have you on. It, uh, it's, it's a pleasure. Okay. So to kind of jump right into things, you know, like if you could tell us a little bit about, you know, how you kind of got into real estate, um, you know, a little bit of your your backstory and and kind of how you got started. Sure. Um, do you want me to tell you this story right before real estate or my background as a whole? Uh, do your background as a whole. <laughs> okay. <cool. laughs> Just wanted to keep it brief, but um, I'm welcome. originally from the Dominican Republic, born and raised. I immigrated to the U.S., 11 years ago, came here with my mom and siblings for school, went to Suffolk University, studied, uh, studied global business and finance. That led me to work at Bank of America right after college. Uh, Bank of America, that's where I met now my business partner, um, Willie Mandrell from JJ Companies. Um, started off with, I was a relationship manager, helping him with some transaction. We uh, talk about what he does. And I became really interested at, you know, being a landlord and, and being in banking, understanding how how all of it was related. Um, so we met for coffee, chatted a little bit, learned more about what he does. And I that's really sparked an interest in me. I didn't know at the time <laughs> that I was going to transition from my full-time job in banking to real estate. <laughs> um, so to conclude, it was a series of events that happened right before I joined real estate full-time. So started with Willie, read a few real estate books, um, started going to networking events, joining, listening to podcasts, reading books. And I came to find out that, you know, this is something, I started seeing a vision. This is something that I can do. Maybe I can start part-time. Uh, but two years ago, I still, if you ask me two years ago, would I be in this position right now? I would say no, because I didn't <laughs> have the vision at the time. Um, I would say one of the uh, meaningful events that happened was in 2020, I was working for Willie part-time and the pandemic happened. So everything was shut down and, um, it was very difficult at the time to see how am I going to start a new career in this industry in the middle of a pandemic? Can you imagine <laughs> thinking of quitting my full-time job at the bank to join real estate? Um, so I was part of um, a part, actually, we hosted a webinar for women in real estate at the time. I was the host. And seeing all the feedback after that and all the comments, I realized, you know what? 
even though I didn't have the experience at the time and I didn't have enough knowledge, it pushed me to learn more. And in learning more and growing in this industry, hopefully inspire other women to do the same thing. That was like a long answer, but. No, I, I love that. That's, <laughs> that's phenomenal. <laughs> I Thank love kind you. of like, you know, how niche it is as well. You know what I mean? And um, mm-hmm. I, I feel like the, the community must be pretty tight, you know, for like the group. <laughs> Um, yes, um, for women, for women, of course. Uh, and I think, you know, it's something that we hear all the time in other podcasts, how the in- real estate industry, it's a male dominated uh, uh, game industry per se. And, uh, but there are a lot of powerful women out there that I, I started following them. And I th- honestly, it was, they made it easier for me to quit my job because they made it happen. Yeah. And it motivated me to be one of them to be another player in the game that could help other women grow in this business. I love that so much. You know, it's, it's really crazy. Like, you know, how, how much it changes like your mindset and, and potentially like your life path, you know, just mm-hmm. based on like some of the people that you're hanging around with. And, you know, all of a sudden, like your mindset starts to elevate and, you know, you kind of hear like the osmosis, like absorbing from, you know, like the people that, that you're around and stuff. And, you know, all of a sudden those things that, that you thought were super duper crazy and like, you could never mm-hmm. do them and whatever. And, mm-hmm. you know, now you're, you're crushing it and, you know, keep moving up the ladder and stuff, you know, it's, it's a really cool thing. Absolutely. I, I mean, it, it's, it challenges you every day. I, um, it's been roughly two years right now that I've been in the industry and there never goes a day where I don't learn something new. Um, like you said, from meeting other people, from networking, um, you're always evolving. That's the beauty of it. There, there is guidelines and structure to operate in certain, certain areas of this business. Nevertheless, the room for creativity and vision and dream, it's, it's, it's limitless. It's endless. You can literally dream of and, and come up with new ideas on how to get to point A to B, even though there's people before you that did it, dif- you know, that did it differently. And it's efficient. It was efficient to them. But as time progresses, changes happen like COVID, you know, a lot of individuals, investors and landlords, they had to adjust um, to what happened with COVID. And it's a, it was amazing seeing the various ways that investors were still making it happen, yeah. um, even though COVID affected a lot of a lot of us. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. And it's um, it was really crazy, like, you know, to kind of see, I mean, even things like on the outside, you know, from like the the eviction moratoriums and like lenders cracking down a lot and like you know how you know people really had to kind of shift their business you know because of something that was happening that's that's never really happened before you know at at least in our lifetime (laughs) you know and it's uh definitely something that the people weren't used to and um yeah (laughs) yeah no I it's uh it's crazy it's crazy definitely so how um I'm trying to think so how um you know with like jay and jay like did you guys kind of like slow down a little bit on like the acquisitions and stuff like that like once covid was running rampant or you know still kind of like running strong and and still killing it (laughs) yep let me give you let me go back a little bit so in 2020 i was still so i met willie 2019 or early 2020 i was a bank of america um, then from Bank of America, I transitioned to Cambridge Trust Company as a financial uh, relationship advisor, same position, relationship manager. Um, at the time, I was working part time with Willie. So COVID hit, things slowed down, things, you know, got everything was shut down. Uh, of course, the leads and, and the buying and selling slowed down. Um, fast forward to the fall. Um, things started picking up a little bit for JJ. Um, I wasn't full-time at the time, so it would, it would be really difficult for me to give you accurate information as far as the volume JJ was experiencing. Uh, yeah. But definitely 2021 came in and amazing. Like It was like COVID really never hit and there was a lot of projects going on. Fast forward to fall 2021, we started getting more leads and then me joining full-time. So I transitioning from the bank to real estate full-time actually last summer, 2021. Um, and ever since 
we it's been nonstop. I mean, it hasn't been crazy where we're not able to handle it, but it's been very consistent, uh, which is good for our flow and the things that we want to do with the company going forward. I think it's uh, we're at a good pace right now. Yeah. So yeah, that's phenomenal. How um how was it kind of like taking the leap from you know like the the W two world that that you were used to you know for for a while to um, you know, jumping in into your passion? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, this is a really good question. I always <laughs> tell people, do not quit your W-2 unless you have a plan. I didn't have a backup plan. I was betting on myself. I love it. <laughs> at the time, I, um, you know, I, I went to school for finance. So I did want, at the time, I wanted to become a financial analyst and, and be in wealth management and put into practice what I went to school for. Mm-hmm. Um, nevertheless, as I was working more time, putting more time into real estate, I realized I don't see myself in a nine to five. I am not ready to leave my nine to five, but what do I have right now that would give me clarity or give me the strength to make the decision that I need to make to do what I love? And uh, honestly, took faith, really believing in me for taking me full time and also me believing in myself, knowing that, hey, no matter what, I'm still going to make it. And that's the mentality I had is I don't care (laughs) what's coming after this, but um, mental health, your, your mental health is very important. If you're not happy in a place, not saying that I wasn't, but if you don't see a future in any company, you won't be able to produce and contribute to the best of your abilities. And that was the conversation I was having with myself at the time is where do I see myself in this company in the next five years? And where do I see myself within real estate? Where do I see myself happier, you know, banking or real estate? And I didn't think about it twice. I resigned. I quit, <laughs> and uh, my mom thought I was crazy. She, um, she said, "Do you have a backup? Do you have any savings?" I mean, I did have a little bit of savings, um, so that gave me the strength and say, "You know what? I can do this for a little bit." Um, but yeah, I wouldn't advise anybody to quit their <laughs> full time job unless they have enough savings or they live with their parents and they have some sort of other sort. Um, sort of income, which I did at the time. So it, it was, it was just scary. Yeah. <laughs> going from having the experience in banking, right. And going into an industry where I had to start all over again. Right. Even though I was part time with JJ, I didn't have the uh, level of expertise needed at the time for me to succeed and excel. Um, so that was a scary moment for me. I can imagine. Yeah, so, and like it's I, it's really crazy. I, I really like, you know, the point, especially that you touched on a minute ago about, you know, like the the mental health and like, you know, mm-hmm. having that self-awareness to be like, all right, like, yeah. you know, this is where I'm working <laughs> right now. Like, you know, what's the future look like, you know, like next mm-hmm. year, like five years, 10 years from now. And like, because yeah. like life's too short, you know what I mean? Like, am I gonna, you know, be unhappy for the next couple of years? And like, mm-hmm. you know, and I could be doing something. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. Like, you know, how many, how many people live that, you know, for like mm-hmm. 40 years, like I'm, I'm yeah. really starting to kind of, you know, see that now, like, you know, just, just people around me, like just, you know, starting to, you know, kind of like get a couple years into their jobs and everything. And, you know, some people are happy, some people aren't, and it just, you know, you have to pay the bills and like, you don't have a choice and, you know, like the, the stereotypical, like, like norm, I guess you could say. And, um, you know, I feel like betting on yourself is, is very, very important, you know? I mean, yeah. yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I would say COVID made it so much easier for me to make that decision because, you know, in the banking industry, we had to adjust. It wasn't easy, uh, for retail bankers, right? I was in the retail department, um, going through that experience. And I met wonderful individuals when I was working at the bank that were helping me um, get into the right track to go into wealth management, which is what I wanted to do. Nevertheless, I came to realize that as everything slowed down, working with clients, my colleagues, I just started looking around and started asking myself, do I see myself here? Yeah. And like you said, awareness and understanding that it's very important for us, even our generation to to not feel that pressure that oh, I have to stay here because I don't 
have the support. I mean, if you don't have the support, of course, it's going to be difficult to make the decision. But believing in yourself and knowing if you put in the right amount of time and the effort and you meet the right people and you're constantly learning and growing and evolving, you have to understand that's going to lead to a positive outcome. Now, if you're not doing anything and you just complaining and, and just feeling sad all the time, there's no, there's not going to be any progress, unfortunately. And surrounding yourself with the right people uh, helps. Going to networking events, seeing other individuals that are still, you know, that are making things happen and others that are starting out. When you put it up yourself with somebody that's starting out, that helps you even more because now the two of you can learn your skill sets, your weaknesses, you, you can exchange ideas, you can go to networking events together. Um, having somebody there will be helpful. It's a, uh, what can I say? It's a, uh, it's, it's difficult. It is. <laughs> it's difficult to be aware and understand that and to have the strength to push forward. But I believe that anybody if, with the right people and the right mentality, anybody can do it. Yeah. No, you're, you're definitely right. You know, and especially like initially starting off, you know, mm -hmm. of looking for, I guess, like other avenues, you know, besides mm -hmm. like just, you know, having like that same job for the next 40 years and like that kind of thing. And actually, you know, starting to, to kind of break into, you know, a different kind of industry, like, you know, like real estate investing and stuff and, you know, going to that first meetup and meeting those first people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing that, like I absolutely love about our industry is mm -hmm. like 99.999% of people are like fully willing to help each other. And like, I've never seen that like in any other industry before. Like usually it's, you know, there's a lot of ego and like, you know, people pushing each other down and like, you know, trying to get to the mm -hmm. top and that type of thing. But like real estate, like it's been so different and literally like, it's just it, like, it's so cool. You know what I mean? Like I tell people all the time, they're like, oh, you know, like I, you know, might want to buy a duplex or something like, you know, I, I don't know, maybe do a flip in a couple of years or something. And I'm like, all right, you know, like we have a couple meetups in Lowell, you know, I know, you know, you guys have some as well. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of meetups, like they're, they're virtual, they're all over the place. Um, you know, like just, just go on down and, you know, just introduce yourself and tell people what you're doing. And, especially even on um, like bigger pockets and in social media, like, mm -hmm. like Heidi, I couldn't even picture, you know, like if we were born into, you know, a little <laughs> bit earlier and like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like didn't, didn't have the internet. Like I think about it once in a while. I'm like, you know, I <laughs> heavily network through like social media and everything and Instagram and Facebook and like, you know, send a lot of messages to get to know people and you know, you can like maintain relationships that way and show support and like yeah. literally like with your fingers, like it's, it's like absurd. <laughs> you know, well, like I have to tell you, sorry that I cut you off. I actually experienced a little bit of what it's like to not be in the social media world and no internet back in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> All right. Yeah. The internet. Well, yeah. maybe because I was younger, but at the time I didn't think we had computers in, in our household. Yeah. probably till I was in sixth or seventh grade. And that was a huge, if you had a computer, you know, it's- it, You're the it popular kid. Thing at the time. <laughs> because back home, we don't, well, at the time, well, now things have changed, of course, it's been 11 years, but at the time, all of our homework assignments, we have to go to the library. We have to read encyclopedias and books. And there was no such thing as, oh, just use Google. the computer, go on Google. <laughs> you know, so I get, and for us, it's like, okay, this is normal. Then the internet came in and like you said, I don't think, well, I have to give props to the investors that came before us and the landlords that made things happen before the internet or social media, because I cannot imagine the number of letters and drive-bys they had to do to find good <laughs> properties and land, right? Now we can use PropStream, we can have, we have MLS and I mean, it's great, it's easier, but doesn't mean that back in the day wasn't uh, efficient. Um, it was, it was compared to now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, exactly. Hands down, like we, we have it easy. And uh, um, which again, brings it to the fact that if you have the willingness to do this, you will be successful. The resources are out there for us to succeed. 
And we have to tap into that. I, I we're very we're blessed. <laughs> I'm grateful to be in this in this generation. I mean, uh, I don't know how I would have done it if with without the resources we have right now. I know. I I totally agree with you. I mean, even like like I like I've heard you know the stories of you know having to actually like walk into a real estate office and like pocket list things and like this that the other. I'm like that's like crazy. Like just thinking about mm-hmm. that, <laughs> you know. And like you said, like you know, we're able to look in public records and active listings and like Facebook, like group chats where people post these deals and like, like all kinds of really crazy stuff. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's, it's not, you know, and I really like something that, that you said a minute ago as well, you know, about like, yeah, it is phenomenal that we have all those resources, but Mm -hmm. now the effectiveness, you know, of like, uh, like campaigns and like driving for dollars Mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would be kind of curious to see data and like, I don't, I don't know if there's data out there for it, but to (laughs) see, so if you did like a a mailer campaign, right. For like (laughs) two to four units, like absentee owned, you know, back (laughs) in like the eighties or nineties and like the amount of phone calls or something that you got back versus (laughs) like what it is now. I Mm. mean, they, they say like the, um, Mm, what is it like the response rates for direct mail or or what like one percent or like like something like that it's like some wicked small percent like Mm -hmm. because do you think like because the barrier to entry is a lot lower like a lot more people are doing it you know Mm because like you just you know find an agent or or sign up Mm -hmm. for prop stream and you know click a couple buttons and and you can send a letter out you know like (laughs) no that's true I think uh it's we have the right tools and resources, um, but the trust and the credibility, um, it's it's like um, it's going the opposite way, right? Uh, unfortunately, right? There's a lot of, because of fraud and scams, unfortunately, a lot of individuals, homeowners, um, kind of have this negative image of us real estate investors and agents. Yeah. Um, and I'm saying this from experience because I, I call call. I we JJ, we do a lot of call calling. We do a lot of mailers. Um, and sometimes it's just easier for us to be like, hey, we are human beings. We can you know see each other face to face, grab coffee. I want you to get to know me. I don't we want you to know who is buying your home and what is our goal and intention when it comes to purchasing your property. Um, And that has been working for us much more than the letters, unfortunately, privacy. And we have, uh, social media is helping us, but other than that, we're in a very tough position with the the right resources, but uh, the reaction from the audience, it's not um, the lack of trust there um, given what's been happening, it, it's just not helping us grow. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. Like one thing that, that I try and, um, like really hit home on, like if I'm doing mm-hmm. like a, a campaign or, or something like that is mm-hmm. to just kind of have that feel of like, Oh, like I'm the guy from down the street, you know, who saw your house mm-hmm. and wants to buy it. Like, let's like, yeah. exactly like you said, you know, like let's meet for coffee, get to know one another. Like, you know, maybe it's a fit, maybe it's not. You know, mm-hmm. and I, like I can see kind of from, um, you know, like the the homeowner or investor angle of like, you know, kind of having that that barrier up, you know, of like, you know, hearing yeah. of people getting scammed from people calling them and, you know, certain certain things kind of happen. And, and, you know, like if somebody like cold called you or something like, you know, you might like freak out right away or something and be like, oh, no, like I don't want to get ripped off or whatever. And, yeah. you know, but if you actually get to know them, like you said, and it's like, no, like we're actually real people like this is a real mm-hmm. thing. Like, let's work something out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's difficult because you cannot do that with 2000 prospects that you have, <laughs> or, you know, you can't imagine going out with for coffee and you'll be, it's time efficiency, right? So um, again, just like you said, be natural when calling them and, and telling them, hey, we are just from the neighborhood trying to improve the health environment and improve the, your home seems like may need a little bit of work. How can we help you with that? And sometimes that's even better than saying, I wanna buy your home. It's how can we help you get your home to the, in the shape that you like it to be? And we're doing, it, Sometimes that's better. 
Exactly. They're not. And they might come back to you months later saying, hey, you know, I'm ready to sell or I know somebody that's ready to sell. Thank you for helping me. I mean, I heard stories of um, stories from other wholesalers where they uh, they will help the owner move out. Like, hey, I want to buy your home. Oh, I don't have the money to move out. I don't have the resources to move all of my stuff. We'll help you and we'll pay for the moving fee. And just hearing that, I was like, wow, that's a really good strategy but it's not really a strategy it's just they genuinely want to help and when you genuinely want to do something business will come to you because people can see right through that homeowners can they will feel safe they will feel comfortable Um, it's just tough uh, the fact that we may not have an opportunity to talk and see every single one of them Um, so that's an opportunity right there for for us yeah a (laughs) hundred (laughs) percent So Heidi, what's kind of your, you know, like your drive and, and your vision, you know, for real estate, for, you know, like the long term, like that ultimate, ultimate goal? Yeah. <laughs> well, ultimately, I, ultimately, I love to see JJ, um, uh, of course, grow our JJ portfolio, um, grow my personal portfolio as I, as an investor and as a landlord. But ultimately, it would be, and this may sound naive, but it will be to help our community, uh, educate, help, and kind of create this closeness of investors and landlords and be able to inspire and just educate. As we grow and learn in this journey, right? Because we have to have the experience, we have to go through the trials, use that and teach, pass it on. I was literally just having this conversation with myself the other day. Why am I working so hard? Okay, yes, buying, owning 200, you know, properties or a thousand properties is great. But after that, what else can you, what else can we do in this world, right? Just owning properties, okay, that's great, that's awesome. You have the units, you have the money, um, but it will be to essentially. Uh, personally, I love to empower other women um, to join in this industry from. Any angle, developing, investing, construct, you know, developing and construction, which not a lot of females are in that area, for becoming an agent, an architect. There's so many different avenues. Um, so being being able to contribute to that, to the vision of JJ in my own vision, that will make me the happiest person in this world, honestly. <laughs> I could, you know, die after that. I'm like, yeah. I think I did my my uh I did my part my job here. Yeah. Society is good. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no, I, I love that. I do, you know, and that's something that that I feel like is really important too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is basically like, you know, on our way up, you know, towards our vision and um, you know, as investors, as as agents, like, you know, like looking at the bigger picture, like yeah. the things that we learn, like taking that stuff and being able to utilize it and mm-hmm. then give that right back to the people who are trying to come up um you know behind you like there was another uh there was another investor who came on the podcast a while ago actually and like he made the analogy that's definitely going to stick with me you know talking about this topic and it's pretty much of climbing a mountain so mm-hmm. like when you first get into the industry you know you you look up the the tippity top up there and you know there's a couple of people who are you know doing really big deals and like raising all this mm-hmm. private money and like doing all this crazy stuff and like, it's, it's like intimidating, you know, you're like, you know, I'm looking for my first property. Like these guys are doing a hundred at a time. Like, this is crazy, you know? And then, but, you know, halfway down the mountain, like, you know, those people with like their first property, first couple properties, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And, you know, like there's you just starting off, but, you know, as soon as you, you know, start to take steps and start to network and everything, you start to move up. You know, and then now, like, you're not, you're not the guy that's still in the parking lot anymore, you know, and now you actually have knowledge, you know, from like constantly absorbing and, you know, like networking with the people that are climbing up the mountain in front of you, you know, to be able to tell, tell the people, you know, a step behind you, like, oh, hey, you know, like go around this rock or like, you know, you might break your, break your ankle here. Like, don't do that, (laughs) you know, and like, you might be able to, to help them out quite a bit you know, and, and bring them up with you. And like, that's, that's something that, that I absolutely love, you know, is there's so much to learn and like Mm -hmm. the, the education and the information out there is, is absolutely insane and and life-changing, you know, and to be able to like, 
you know, have a conversation with somebody and then like your wheels are turning and you're getting super excited and the light bulbs are going off and everything and then be able to utilize that and then be the individual who, um, you know, is able to do that for somebody else is, is crazy, you know, and, and kind of change their world. <laughs> I, I agree with you. It's, it's a beautiful feeling. And uh, I have to say that I can relate to that 100%. It doesn't matter what level we add in this business. There's always going to be somebody who's going to look up to you or just taking that first step. You know, I always say, oh, I'm still learning. You know, I have a, I mean, I am still learning. I have, I know I have a long journey ahead of me. And sometimes it's intimidating uh, when people come and ask me questions because I don't have the answers. <laughs> I don't have all the answers, but I'm sure I know other people that do. And uh, it's uh, just knowing that you're going to meet individuals ahead and, you know, by your side and behind you, knowing that you can help all of them. You can bring value to those that are ahead of you because you can see something that they're unable to see. And then those behind you, you're warning them about certain mistakes. I mean, it, it's it's a beautiful, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful experience and <laughs> a good position to be in. Yeah. Now, because being at the top, it will be very difficult for you to talk to those that are very, at the very bottom. They yeah. won't be able to see you. They won't be able to relate to you because they will be intimidated by the fact that, okay, you're all the way at the top. How can I communicate? How can I get to you? Um, so being in this uphill battle and journey, I, I think that's the most beautiful part of this journey. Uh, in addition to, of course, getting to the top. Yeah. It really is. I, I really like that, you know, because like it definitely is, you know, tough starting off and like, yeah, you know, I, but I feel like, you know, one thing that was cool and something we kind of talked about earlier, um, you know, not to go down another rabbit hole again, but basically, yeah. you know, like going on social media and stuff and like finding, you know, investors in your market and like, you know, people who are doing like what you want to do. And then just, you know, basically like, you know, following them, like, you know, following their story and everything and like okay. sending them a message and, and just tell them like, you know, kind of what you want to get into. And, you know, mm -hmm. most people will want to, you know, hop on a phone call with you or something and, and see how they can help, you know, and like, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, absolutely like, like so eager, you know, whenever I'm able to help people who, you know, are, are at the very, very beginning, you know, cause I'm definitely at the, the very beginning, you know, in the bigger picture. Um, yeah. you know, but to be able to give back, you know, some of the, the very few experiences that I've had so far and, you know, mm -hmm. be like, Hey, you know, if you get oil, make sure you check the tanks before you close, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like, it's, um, you know, it's things that we go through, you know, on a daily basis and, you know, it, it makes us strong and everything. And, you know, if we're able to, um, you know, to kind of, like tell people I mean one what we're doing like you know just to okay. kind of let people know what we're doing and you know like network and and kind of put yourself out there and everything but mm -hmm. it also has that additional level of value um you know for those people coming up and they can read like you know some of those horror stories and everything that that mm -hmm. happen and or some of those success stories and you know yeah. like challenges and how we got through them and and that kind of thing you know so at least like you know you can start to climb up the mountain and and just kind of you know, yeah. work your way up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Wow. No, absolutely. I, that's, that's, um, it's a beautiful journey. What can I say that it this is. is what it is. It's a, it's a marathon. It's a whole journey. There's no finish line. I mean, unless other people might have an end goal, it, it might never stop. So yeah, we're always going to continue growing and helping those that are joining us. Of course. And that was actually something I, I kind of forgot for a second, but there was a, there was a point you made a while back about, um, you know, like having that end goal and like that, you know, like yeah. number of units or like, you know, cash flow per month, like, like those yeah. like type of goals. And then it's like, oh, well, you know, once you reach that point, like now what? And there was okay. something that, uh, that another guest, um, said in the past actually, and, he said something that was extremely interesting. Um, shout out to, to Jorge Sarigo, if you're watching this. <laughs> but, um, hi, Jorge. I didn't know you yet, but hi. <laughs> um, so he was saying, he's like, oh, you know, look at some of the, you know, most, you know, the highest net worth individuals on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like Jeff Bezos and, um, you know, Bill Gates and like, you know, some of those kind of people 
like they got like more money than God. Like, why are they still working? You know, I mean, because theoretically, like they could just call it quits, like, you know, just step out of mm -hmm. everything and sit on the beach and drink Mai Tais all day. Mm -hmm. But like, why are they still working? You know, and that's that's something that really got me thinking was like, you know, that's everything that we want to do. Like, that's great. But mm -hmm. what's the actual like, you know, bigger picture? Why? Like, how can we give back? Like, you know, it's it's so much bigger than you know, just the things that, that we're focusing on, you know, and it's, uh, I, I really like that, um, kind of that analogy. Yeah, no, I agree. I, it's a beautiful feeling when, um, have you, okay, we will probably going to talk about this later, but <laughs> it relates to the book, The Goal Giver. I don't want to dive into that, but it's a beautiful story. And it talks, um, uh, with that, having an, uh, an abundance mindset. Um, it, cause as you're succeeding and you're bring value to other people, it, it goes, a, we'll, we'll talk about it later, <laughs> but I'll tell you more about the book, but it relates to what you were saying and just helping others. And, um, the, hence why a lot of other, like you said, a lot of high net worth individuals, they're not stopping because they just want to help. They have reached a level of success and financial wealth and status where, um, they have found more meaning in, in helping others. And if you find that early on, that is your motivation to succeed. Yeah. The only reason, well, not the only reason, but one of the many reasons why I, and I'm thankful for JJ for supporting and, and Boston Wealth Builders. I have this vision for the woman in real estate. And that is one of the many reasons why I'm working as hard as I am right now is because if I don't do it, who else is going? To, I, I don't see anybody else doing it and not saying that they're not doing it, but I haven't seen any other woman creating a space for us. So I'm like, okay, can we go ahead Let's and do, do not a space? <laughs> Let me correct that. There are a lot of women out there that are giving back and are doing great things. And I have a lot of respect for them, yeah. but I have not yet found a community where I can be part of. Yeah. Just correcting myself so it doesn't come back. <laughs> and that's what I like to do. It's create a community for both men and women, but mainly for women uh, to lift them up and help them grow in this journey. Yeah. And I think that's the coolest thing in the world, you know, to, mm -hmm. you know, to see kind of like that, that gap in the market, you know, and be able mm -hmm. to, to create, you know, like a vision of, you know, a, a bunch of, a community, you know, basically. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really special, you know, and it's, uh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and we need that. We need that. I've been to other conferences outside of Massachusetts. Uh, and maybe I need to get more out there. I know there are a lot of meetups in Boston, but I have yet, I haven't yet to witness the type of meetups and networking events that I see on social media happening in Texas or Florida, um, Georgia. You see numbers right and you see a lot of individuals just being involved and giving back and I haven't seen that in that volume and freak uh with frequency here in Massachusetts and I guess it's something that I would like to see um personally and and I think it'll be beneficial for a lot of other people that are trying to grow in this business everybody's just so quiet into themselves yeah. some <laughs> and uh which is great you know respect that a hundred percent, but for people like you and me that, are, that want to go out there and inspire and help other people, uh, we need to surround yourself with more, other people that have the same mentality and, and create that community for us. And for those that are coming after us too. Yeah, no, you're, you're definitely right. I love that. You know, like you, you see some like the, like Instagram or Facebook ads sometimes for yeah. these like enormous events. And yeah, that, that's a good point. Actually. I haven't really thought about that you know, like our meetups in, in Massachusetts, I mean, just, just like on average, I guess you could say, I mean, <laughs> you know, some of them are a pretty good size, but like, I, I haven't seen any either that are like, you know, thousands and thousands of people or even like a thousand people, you know, it's, and you see some of these like wicked big, like really crazy events and like everything's, you know, nuts and everything and in other yeah. parts of the U S and I think that's um that's pretty cool. That's like a whole nother level. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? community involvement, you know, getting our community involved and then uh, painting the picture that if you want to do this, you can do it. I think the reason why a lot of people don't start, it's because they see somebody else with 
X amount of units, X amount of you know followers on Instagram. It's like, okay, I can never do that. No, yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> you just have to start. <laughs> you have to start and you have to meet the right individuals. So I will help you get to that point, yeah. which is another point I, I like to make. And I'm sorry if I'm going off here. No, it's okay. <laughs> Before, I used to believe, oh, I can do this on my own. I can, whatever I want to do in life, I can do it by myself. Yep. <laughs> I was so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I came to realize that, Yes, I could do certain things on my own. However, partnering up with individuals that have more experience than you and less will help you grow and get there a lot faster. Um, as long as you also bring in value to them. So it, it has to be a two-way street. You're bringing value one way or another and they're recipro reciprocating it. But knowing that, and who, to whoever is listening this, you're not going to be able to do this alone. I mean, you, you could, and if you do it, please give me a call. Like, email me, <laughs> yeah, I want to you did it. <laughs> like, I like to know how you did it, how many days you didn't sleep, you know, <laughs> how many phone calls you have to make. Because, I mean, I'm pretty sure we can do it if we set our mind. But your journey would be so much smoother uh, if you just connect with other people. Yeah. And just go, go to the event that you're afraid to go to, sign up for the Facebook group, ask questions, post them. I used to hesitate to post questions on Facebook groups thinking, oh, I don't want my question to be too stupid or what if, you know, just do it. Like, yeah. just do it. Don't quit your job without having savings. But <laughs> definitely, um, just if you want to do something, just go ahead and do it. And you'll learn, you'll, you'll learn what you're good at and what you're not good at. You start to realize, wow, I thought I was good at this, but I'm not. And that's what you need to focus on to get better and succeed in this business. If this is the path you like to take. Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely awesome. I love that. You know, I, I definitely, you know, kind of share that. I think it's so like the way I was raised, like it, it was pretty just like independent, you know, like mm -hmm. just, you know, kind of like taking care of myself in a way. I mean, like, you know, my, my parents were still phenomenal and everything, but I guess, you know, just kind of the, the mentality that I adopted from my parents was just kind of more of like an independent kind of lifestyle. And, mm -hmm. you know, you, that definitely, you know, comes out quite a bit. And like, I don't know, like, <laughs> in, in real estate, you're 100% mm -hmm. right. Like, I, I've seen it now, you know, like kind of mm -hmm. jumping into the industry and stuff, like how much of a, a team game this is, you mm -hmm. know, like, like, even um, think about like, you know, just a regular, mm -hmm. like, you know, buy and hold transaction. Like there's you, like there's an attorney, there's, you know, a, another agent, there's an inspector, there's, you know, a loan officer, like there's like a million people in one transaction, you know, like there's an insurance person, like it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, like, you can't do all that on your own. And I mean, you know, if somebody, you know, finds out how to do it, please give us a call. That would be awesome. Right. <laughs> You'll definitely need a team. Uh, yeah. But hey, I mean, anything it's, there's a saying that goes, you can do anything you say you mind to do. So if there's someone out there that wants to do it alone, go, go ahead and do it. I'll cheer you on. I'll be, yes, go ahead, go after it. And I guess I would never see you at the finish line because we're not doing this separately, but yeah. I like to have coffee with you and hear how you did, how you did it. Like yeah. that's you can do it. Ooh. Great. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I totally agree, Heidi. I, I do. That's awesome. <laughs> so question for you. I, I like to ask this question to everybody because usually the answers are, are pretty unique. So mm -hmm. how do you define wealth? Okay, so <laughs> what kind of wealth are we talking about here? Financial wealth? Status, freedom, health? Um, I, usually, I usually leave it pretty open. <laughs> I know oh, it's okay. like, it's extremely general and like- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I would say, and this is, I will give you a vague or in a general response, but wealth to me, since you're not giving me any specific, uh, yeah. <laughs> direction would be having an abundance of something. Yeah. It could be tangible or intangible. And then you having that abundance, you're able to share and bring value and it, 
to other people. Yeah, we we'll just leave it at that. Having an abundance of intangible or tangible items. I love that. So and much. never runs out. So there has to be a system in place where it's generating and it's uh, it's automated to con- to produce um, on a level where you don't your presence doesn't have to be there at twenty four seven. That's phenomenal. I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, this question's it's usually a curveball yeah. and it, it usually kind of stops people in their tracks. <laughs> because I was like gonna it's, say, it's we so can general. dive into, yeah. <laughs> we can go into financial, we can go into status, we can go freedom or, or health, right? Um, yeah. but um I unfortunately, not unfortunately, it is very typical for us human beings to tie wealth with money, right? If you have a lot of money, you're wealthy. No, sometimes people think, okay, I'm healthy, I feel wealthy because I'm breathing today. I, you know, I am healthy. I am alive. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna leave it at that because we can. I can go deeper into this topic, and and we don't want we don't want that. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree with you. You know, like just just having that abundance, and mm-hmm. um, you know, like in, in the meantime, like you know, once you have that like you were saying, like that system, like, you know, whatever it is, like in, in whatever industry you're in, like that kind of thing, Mm -hmm. you know, that frees you up like time-wise, you know, once you get that, how you want it and get it systematized and everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once you have more time, like you can give back more and exercise and, you know, all all that fun stuff. And yeah, it's usually people kind of say, um, pretty much like something around abundance. Mm. Because that's, (laughs) The, the, I mean, if we Google the definition, we, which we can right now, um, it probably will tie it to financial wealth or yeah. value, some sort of, it has to have value. I think that's key. That's a key component. It's abundance and it has to have value to the point that it could bring value to other people. You're, you're, it's bringing something positive out of it. Yeah. That's the closest thing I could relate it to. <laughs> no, I, I love it. <laughs> Ooh, I got one more question for you here, Heidi. Um, yep. And I know I kind of have the answer already, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Okay. So the question is, do you read? And what is your favorite business investing or real estate book that you would recommend to anyone? Oh, okay. if you had to pick one or a couple. <laughs> can, I, can I give you two for two sure. different reasons? Okay. Sure thing. <laughs> I do love reading. Um, I So one of the books, it's not real estate related, but it's business related. Um, it's titled Never Split the Difference yeah. by Chris. I forgot awesome. his last name. Yes. Mm-hmm. I read this book in the middle of COVID and I consider myself an introverted person. Um, and it's funny because I went to school for business. So we have to learn how to negotiate, how to have that conversation, you know, how to have that interaction, right? Reading this book really opened my eyes and it made me realize, you know what? maybe I'm not introverted. Maybe I don't, I haven't really taught myself the level of skill set and ability that I need to succeed in certain areas, right? But the, the book is great for people that I would say negotiation skills, yeah, 100% needed. But communication skills, understanding people, body language, the psychology of it, amazing book for that. Um, so if you're somebody who's looking to, you know, start in the, in the business or already are established and you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Um, I could not stop reading it. Yeah. <laughs> I told myself, okay, two chapters, three chapters a day, and, and I will just continue on and it's, just, which is bad, you know, I have work to do at the time I was at the bank. So I was <laughs> reading, um, during lunch on my way to work on my way home. Um, yeah. but the second book, it's, a uh, it's a real estate book and also a business book. And it's, it's called Cashflow Secrets. It's written by Willie Mandrell, my partner. I'm not saying this book because oh, wow. I'm biased, uh, <laughs> but this book really, um, I, his story and, and the processes in place and the structure that I could really relate to, to everything in that book. And if you're somebody who's two things, who's local, or somebody who's looking to start into real estate and you have not yet found a reason, I guess, to start or to continue, great book. But it has amazing resources broken down into pieces. Amazing. I read that book in two days. 
Nice. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot stop reading it. And <laughs> Willie's probably going to see this video and he's going to think that, you know, why do you do that? Sounds like you promote it. I am not, this is not a paid marketing. Um, I really, I really love the book. And I told him a million times and I have other women come to me and say, hey, you know, the book and I recommend, read it. I mean, reach that for that amazing book to give you a basis of what it's like to, um, how money works. Yeah. What it's like to be an employee, an investor. Uh, what was the other, there's four, there's quadrants, right? There's an employee, a uh, self-employed. Business is, owner uh, and entrepreneur, owner. Is it maybe? <laughs> I'm a little um, I could be wrong. I read that book a while ago, so I didn't yeah. know the details. But again, great book to start. Um, but those two are my go-to when it comes to um, recommending real estate because it gives you two different perspectives. It gives you the business side of it, um, never see the difference. And then cash flow secrets tells you the story of somebody who started from scratch, from Dorchester and how he managed to get to where he is right now. And I'm like, wow, I cannot relate more because I spent 11 years in Dorchester. And uh, I love, I feel like I'm from Dorchester even though I didn't grow up there. <laughs> and uh, just seeing and reading the trajectory and reading uh, the, the challenges, I was like, wow, some of these things I have seen already um, from my grandfather, who's a real estate investor, and also, it brought a sense of hope that somebody in our community um, has established himself in this business the way he has. I love that so much. Is where can I get that, Heidi? I really want to read that. You can find it on. <laughs> Is it on Amazon? Here we go. Like, <laughs> find it on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, it's on Amazon right now. Um. Okay, I'll send you the link, but if people are, yeah, Amazon, Cashflow Secrets by Willie J. Mandrell. And never split the difference. I'm sure it's on Amazon too. Chris Voss, send me a check, please. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> a um, promo. <laughs> I'm sure it's on Amazon too. <laughs> great books, great books, great books. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited about that, Um, about Willie's book. That I'm definitely, I'm literally going to order that like right after we get off. <laughs> Yeah. that's that's super I mean, cool it, yeah it's great it's it, it, it's a it's a great I mean there are other books that are amazing and I mean oh my god uh what's the other one the millionaire real estate investor there's mm-hmm. um there's one by written by Robert Kiyosaki's accountant tax-free wealth great yeah. book to understand numbers and, and taxation uh, I mean, I can go on and on, but right. <laughs> there's, there's so many good ones. <laughs> there's so many good books. And I think there's books for different, um, in your journey, uh, it's very important that you pace yourself, right? There's certain books that are way too advanced and, and contain a lot of information that you may not understand. So starting with business books, marketing, right? Psychology, understanding people. This business, it's all about people. Yeah. Um, you have to, you know, c- not cater, but really understand behavioral um, to be able to deliver the message and help others gr- grow in the way that they need to grow, right? Um, then there's negotiation books, and then there's numbers. There's a lot of rehab books out there that talks about all the lingo and how construction works. So just understanding where you are in this business, your face. Uh, there's books for, I, I would say, every step of your way but I don't know everybody has a different method of reading that's just how I do it myself (laughs) no I I totally agree with you you know I mean like some books like really hit home you know at at certain parts of your journey and you know others maybe it might not like you know maybe you read um I don't even know I'm trying to think of an example I don't know, maybe like a, a book on like raising private capital and like, you know, maybe you are still looking for like your first house hack or something, or, yeah. you know, like you're already, you know, like you're part of like a team that's already done like a couple, you know, syndications or something like, oh, like, yeah. you know, is it really like phenomenal book? Don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. you know, like how like applicable is it? You know, it's, yeah. I think, I think that's pretty interesting. And, mm-hmm. you know, to your point of, starting off with some of those books that that really you know start to build up the skills in yeah. in communication and and really like digging deep into like that psychology and mm-hmm. um and that kind of thing is is crucial 
Yeah, I'll tell you a funny story. When I was at the bank, um, we had this coach come in and she was doing like a, a quick workshop, training us on how to communicate with our clients. I want the book, The Go-Giver. But at the time I was reading all the real estate books. Now, it's a tiny book. Yeah. And I was thinking, why would I even read this book? Okay, The Go-Giver, great. I mean, the title says it <laughs> Fantastic. all. Fantastic. Uh, right? <laughs> and I felt bad for having that first reaction because I was so focused on, oh, I need to read practical books. I need to read this book so I can learn that skill set. But then I took the time and I read it. I don't know how long it took me. It's a tiny little book. And I was like, wow, I needed to read this book at this time in my life so that I could have a clear vision of my role and my purpose in this business. Because it, had I not read that book, I don't think I would have the mind. I, I don't think I would have the open mind that I have right now when it comes to business. A lot of us, and I'll say us because I probably had this, uh, in my nature a while ago, but we go into business thinking me, 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 me. It's how can I, okay, I'm meeting this person. How can they benefit me? I'm doing this for me, me, me. But the book really delivered the message of when you so focus on yourself, you miss an opportunity to help others. And when you miss that opportunity to help others, you're missing an opportunity of them helping you. Because now your hands are open. Now you, you don't have a lot in your hands. You're able to give back. Little do you know that it might, it will reciprocate. Maybe in years later, it's maybe not. Uh, but it's not about the reciprocation. It's just the feeling yeah. of doing something good. And I, it was like a slap on my face when, uh, after I read <laughs> the book, amazing book, highly recommend it. Um, if you're somebody who's in sales, yeah. whoever works in sales has a lot of pressure to, to meet quotas and um, not related to real estate, but. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I didn't want to continue uh, on this topic, but yeah, another book that whoever is listening to this can read. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Another um, another investor actually gave that book to me a while back, and like really? I'm I'm blown away with like how small that book is, but like how powerful it is. Like that book yeah. is like game changing. <laughs> like it is, and I, I love how it's. I love how it's told too, like it literally in like a, you know, a story kind of perspective, but Hey, like, you know, by the way, like glad you're entertained, but you know, here's a couple of really important lessons. Like don't miss mm -hmm. this part. <laughs> yes. Yes. You yes, know, like yes. not, not every book There's there's only been a couple that I've seen that have kind of been told that way. Um, mm -hmm. Like the, the poor, uh, not the poorest man, the richest man in Babylon. I don't know if you've read that one, but it's another, um, it's more of like a personal finance kind of book. And it's one of those books that was written like a wicked long time ago, but like the lessons are still super relevant. And mm -hmm. uh, like, it's told the same way, like of literally in like a, a story, but in this story, like these lessons are, are extreme and like can totally change your life. And that, that book is amazing. The go-giver mm -hmm. it's, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it is the tiny book, but powerful message. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Heidi, thank you very, very much for coming on here. I, I could talk to you for hours. <laughs> I know, I know. I was like, we could talk more. Um, this is amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Definitely. So we're on um, like social media and stuff. Can you and like J and J be found? I'll, I'll link everything down below. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so you can find us on Instagram at JJ Companies Inc. Um, same name on Facebook and YouTube, JJ Companies. Uh, website jjcompanies.com and you can find me also in all those sites and at heydibarreiro.com um, my personal instagram doesn't have a lot of content just yet but if you'd like to shoot me a message you can reach me at jj um, instagram page or my own which is it's heydibarreiro that's my um my info yeah awesome thank you very very much Heidi that that was absolutely thank amazing <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. I uh, thank you so much for having me here today. And I honestly look forward to um, just working with you in the near future and, and, and see what, you know, you will do in this business. I'm very excited. Um, Lemonster, right? Is yes. Where you're yep. investing? Great area. Um, yeah. Uh, if your audience have any questions, would like to connect I'm in Boston and um, I'm an open book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, guys, that concludes our Creating Wealth podcast episode for today. 
I want to thank every single person that has listened this far. It really means a lot to know that people can learn from me and with me as we build wealth together. Hopefully you can take home at least one thing from this podcast that will improve your life just a little bit. If you could, please check me out on social. That's at Kyle Curtin Real Estate on Instagram, Facebook, and I'm on Bigger Pockets. Until next time, let's build together.